to deliver this address to the nation. Imam Hassan Zakaria, who is standing in for the National Chief Imam, Sheikh Dr. Nuhu Sharabutu, Muslim Chiefs, my Muslim brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Eid Mubarak. As always, I've joined you this morning to commemorate yet another important event on the Islamic holy calendar, and this time it's the Eid for Allah. Indeed, ever since President Jerry John Rawlings recognized the holy celebrations of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha and instituted them as important national holidays here in Ghana. They have over the years become events that Ghanaians from all walks of life and religious persuasions look forward to. Imam Hassan, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Eid of Adha, which signifies a feast of sacrifice, is an account of how Allah tested the faith of Prophet Abraham by requiring the ultimate sacrifice from him, a sacrifice of his son. It is a powerful lesson of unwavering trust and selfless obedience and submission to the will of Allah. It is the ultimate test of faith Allah could require from any one of us, both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. The question we must ask is, how would we have acted in these circumstances if we were Abraham? Would we have passed the test Allah subjected us to? Today, as we are gathered here to celebrate this all important holy occasion, the key question is, I believe we'll be asking, is what does Allah require of us as Muslims, as non-Muslims, as Ghanaians? I believe that Allah wants us to live in peaceful coexistence with one another, just as we have been doing in Ghana over the years. Just as we are enjoined to symbolically give two thirds of our meat, that is the sacrifice animal away, he would want us to sacrifice our own comforts for the welfare of our neighbors, including those who are non-Muslims. He would want us to be our brother's keeper. Allah would require of us to speak the truth and not deceive people for our own selfish reasons. Allah would want us to continue working hard and trust Him to take us to the expected destination He has planned for us. Thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, Allah has blessed our nation Ghana. We continue to move closer to fully realizing the enormous potential that our country holds in order to achieve the most optimum development that she is capable of. Across all sectors, we are laying a solid foundation for the eminent takeoff of what I call an economic transformation, God willing, in my second term in office. We have successfully boosted all sectors in readiness for this takeoff. We're expanding our ports, we're building more airports, we're upgrading others to international standards, we're providing more buses to create easy transportation linkages between our towns and villages. We're building new roads, we're rehabilitating several others all over the country, we're building factories, we're starting irrigation projects in readiness towards our green agricultural revolution. We're connecting more communities to the electricity grid. We're extending clean drinking water to many communities. We're creating more opportunities for our young students who have had their education truncated at 
at the JHS level, if it were not for the 123 community-based senior high schools we are building, we are developing our oil and gas resources to guarantee power and energy supply, we are investing heavily in restoring our railways, and together we have come very far. And I believe that together we will achieve even more. Working together, all Ghanaians, we will make Ghana the regional powerhouse, providing economic and social opportunities for all Ghanaians, irrespective of religion, politics, or ethnicity. I envision Ghana becoming a net exporter of food, power, education, and healthcare to the rest of the ECOWAS sub-region. Through the implementation of this economic transformation and other policy initiatives, we will create for Ghanaians massive employment and economic development opportunities. But let us work together, let us be each other's, each other's keeper, and let us love our neighbor as ourselves. This year, we conducted a successful hatch. I wish to express my regret to all who due to certain reasons were unable to embark on the hatch this year. This was due to two main factors. One was the airlift of 2,000 passengers from the Tamale International Airport, which was very well patronized, reduced the quota of those who took off from Accra. Two is the dramatic growth in pilgrim numbers beyond the quota that has been assigned Ghana by the Saudi authorities. I've asked our Hajj committee to request an increase in our quota of pilgrims from the current 5,424 to 7,000 pilgrims next year. Chief Imam and Elders, Imam Hassan, as we gradually inch towards the 2016 general elections, we should all endeavor to uphold the peace that has characterized our elections and defined us as a people. It is this that has made us to be described as the model of democracy in Africa. I'm always thankful that Allah has blessed me with the opportunity to be the president of such an industrious, united, and peace-loving people like Ghanaians. It is for this reason that I remain confident that once again, when our democratic credentials are tested on December 7th, we will respond with vigor and deliver yet another peaceful, fair, and transparent election to the world. May Allah bless Ghana, may Allah bless us all. I wish all Ghanaian Muslims happy in all other. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh,